so turn your I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. Let me just talk a minute about, and some of you may have heard me talk about this before. I'm going to talk about the empty tomb. Yes. All right, so you know about the, the empty tomb, which was not at all empty, by the way. The tomb of Jesus Christ was not empty. Now, this is a very, very significant fact. It's an important fact. And it, it's, it's so overlooked by most Christians. As I was saying, when Mary Magdalene went after being at the tomb and saw that the tomb Jesus was not in the tomb, she runs back and she tells Peter and John that the tomb Jesus is not in the tomb, right? right. So then it says the two, Peter and John, were running together, and the other disciple, that's where it says the two are running, the other disciple, that's John, ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen, linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And so Simon Peter also came following him and entered the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the face cloth which would had been on his head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So when they got there, the tomb, Jesus isn't there, right. no doubt, hallelujah, but the tomb's not empty. What's there? The grave clothes are there. The resurrected Savior came forth from the tomb, leaving the grave clothes behind. Amen. Yes. On the other hand, Lazarus, Lazarus. Yes. when Jesus went to see him, or went to when he had been buried, he's dead four days and in the tomb, right? Jesus gave thanks to the Father, standing outside the tomb of Lazarus. And it says, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. Jesus said, unbind him and let him go. John eleven forty three and 44. Mm -hmm. Lazarus, this new man, came into new life. He came forth still wearing the clothes of the old man. The dead man, the old habits, the old traditions, the old ways of thinking. So he, again like us, would have to be transformed by the renewing of his mind. He would have to be unbound and set free, which is exactly what Jesus said, right? right. Unbind him and let him go. He would have to change what he was wearing. Yes. Yes. Right? He's taking the, the grave clothes off. He's got to put something else on. It was required that he change his clothing. So do we. So let's get back to the basics with this foundational truth before we go any further. Mm -hmm. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm going to read starting in verse 12. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. The things of God are spiritually appraised. We need to consider that particularly as we're doing this study about the clothing, right? right? Our new wardrobe. Way back when, when God was bringing his people out of Egypt, that's the world, and into the promised land, by the word, he commanded that, and I'm going to read from Leviticus 19.19, 19, he said, you are to keep my statutes, 
You shall not breed together two kinds of your cattle. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed, nor wear a garment upon you of two kinds of material mixed together. Mm. You cannot mix the old with the new. Like I the mean, you know, skin. like the wine skin. You can't put new wine in old skins, all right? right. And, and Jesus said this in, in Luke 5, 36. It said, and he was also telling them a parable. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, he will both tear the new and the piece from the new will not match the old. Okay? Mm -hmm. you're, going to, you're going to put on new garments, okay? It's got to be totally new. If you do, then whatever you're doing, if you, if you mix the two together, mm -hmm. will tear apart and look ridiculous. The things of God don't mix with the things of the world. I mean, there's a, how many examples can you think of? No man can serve two masters, right? And Jesus said that in the Sermon on the Mount. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. This truly is binary. Mm -hmm. right? yes, yes. It is either one or the other. It is cut and dry. You know, don't take my word for this. I mean, I'll give you an example. James, James 4, uh, verse 4. He said, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Decided it all Jesus. I have decided it all Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning. Back. Go, none, go, we.